Hello everyone and welcome to the What Else Podcast. We're finally here. I am your host, Duane Binyas, and this is the show where we talk about college experiences, stories, and everything you need to know about the Battles program. Our very first guest of the show is quite like a goddess in the craft of teaching linguistics and especially discourse analysis. And this is according to very reliable sources. She was also a Fulbright foreign language teaching assistant at the University of Michigan, USA. On top of that, she has also published numerous research studies and co-authored a number of instructional materials. I have been under her wing last semester and I greatly admire her for how passionate she is in her craft and how creative she is in teaching her classes. I am talking about none other than the MSUIIT English Department's chairperson, the amazing Dr. Irish May Fernandez Delona. Hello, ma'am. We're so happy to have you here on the show. Hello, Dwayne. Good evening. Good I'm very evening, ha- ma'am. First and foremost, I would like to congratulate the BAELS officers for coming up with a very interesting program. Um, it's called What Else, right? So basically, I hope people are also listening to this uh, program because I believe that you have a lot of potentials. And other than that, you have a lot of things to discover about other people and other topics under the sun. Yes, ma'am. So now we know that we are all under quarantine. So how has quarantine been treating you? Well, um, the last couple of months, it was really hard, you know, because I, I, I enjoyed being out in the sun. I enjoy um, meeting a lot of people and talking to a lot of people. But then now that I'm forced to stay here in my room or in my, in my house, basically, it's been really challenging. But uh, I'm coping. I'm coping well. Oh, that's really nice to hear, Mom. Um, of course, you also, just like all of us, you probably discovered new and old hobbies of yours that you probably didn't know before or like you already forgot. What were those hobbies, ma'am? Well, I'm really amazed uh, of the fact that I was able to grow my own vegetables. And at the same time, I uh, have come to love baking and cooking. I really hope that we get to taste the cooking of Dr. Dalona. Hopefully in the future when when this is over. (laughs) Yes, when these are all over, then why not? Okay, ma'am. We have also heard that you have recently been promoted as the head of the English department. How does it feel for you to be given that position? Well, it is an honor, of course, to be leading a group of um, really creative, dynamic, and very inspiring group of men and, and women, you know. But uh, it's really a lot of pressure um, because I have to do a lot of things just to attain whatever the the targets are for the department. And of course, I wanted as much as possible for the English, to be, English department to be as relevant and responsive to whatever demands there may be in uh, the wider academic landscape. Well... If I say so myself, I think you're very capable of the job because you have very fresh ideas. I have witnessed that in your classes oh uh, when I was in your class. I was like, my God, mom thinks of every single detail and I think that she will be very suitable for this job. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, every day is a learning experience, I, I believe. And so uh, I, I'm not perfect. Um, my colleagues know that and understand that. But of course, I'm very helpful because every step of the way, they are there. I could easily ask them questions. They they sort of mentor me every step of the way. So we since we're already talking about the English department, it has been a very, very big question for us that the AB English is no longer present. It was already replaced by the Bachelor of Arts in English Language Studies. So to clarify that, ma'am, what can you tell us about the program? Well, I think a lot of you should understand that there are many factors which prompted the creation of this new program, the Bachelor of Arts in English Language Studies. For one, it is the varied experiences as well as the different research focus of the faculty members. Second is the changing Philippine academic landscape that we have to um, deal with. Third is the 
external evaluations like the AACUP accreditation and CHED's evaluation for Center of Development or Center of Excellence, as well as the continuing aspiration of the department to become relevant and responsive to MSU IIT's goal of becoming a research university and to the demands of the greater ASEAN market. All, these, all of these factors have been taken into consideration in the series of strategic planning, including the BAEL Summit conducted by the Department of English. Initially, there were three clusters identified by the department. One is language pedagogy, second is literary and cultural studies, and third is communications and media. And then at the time, looking at the experience and expertise of its faculty members, it was then strongly recommended that the, the department offers programs in language studies and literary studies while building its capacity to offer media studies. So going back to your question, how is this current program different? BIOS has actually some similar features to the previous program in terms of the discipline, which is the English language, but entirely different in its approach and framework in the study of English and in the set of skills and competencies it intends to hone. Well, more importantly, it is compliant with CHED's minimum requirement to wit, articulating a comprehensive view of the English language system and its development, participating effectively in communicative situations where language systems such as the sound, vocabulary, syntax, and meaning could vary, identifying multi-perspectives and interrelations among texts and contexts, demonstrating research skills and appraising the role of humanistic education, among others. Courses in the program, therefore, allow students to combine theory and practice in the learning, teaching, and use of English in various contexts in and outside the country, with, of course, the aim of improving the quality of English communications in diverse situations. Other than that is to have profound understanding of contextualized varieties of English and to contribute to knowledge generation on historical, social, cultural, and political dynamics of English use in post-colonial countries like the Philippines, and to contribute to the corpora of Asian Englishes by capturing any emergence of either regional or ASEAN English variety in some of our literary works and non-literary texts here in Mindanao and maybe even in the entire country. Um, you have already mentioned that the BAELS program has a different framework than the AB English program. So, of course, they, this would require an adjustment for the teachers in their teaching styles, a very great deal of attention to details, and implementation of the program. So, in your perspective, Mom, was there any challenges that you encountered due to the curriculum shift, especially on your teaching styles and on your implementation of the said program? Well, as far as teaching style is concerned, I believe that it has basically changed simply because the students' expectations have also changed. It was very glaring during the students' orientation in 2018 when the first batch of BAEL students came and attended the first students' orientation program. It was very obvious that they did not seem to expect the courses they were hearing at that time. Though some of them were apparently excited, others were obviously quite disheartened with the fact that they won't have literature courses anymore. Well, it is true that the uh, courses like phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, translation are all new and maybe too technical for students. And explaining the expected learning outcomes of these courses for the first time could be truly intimidating. Isn't that uh, right, Dwayne? I'm also one of those students, ma'am, who was like, I, hindi pala kami magli literature. We won't be encountering those anymore. Will will be more on the technical side. So I was really, I was very disheartened, as you said, Kanina. But actually, whether you agree with me or not, upon entering into your individual classrooms, I could see your eyes beaming with excitement still. And this is actually a clear indication that even if the courses aren't the ones that you expect, but seeing you excited, listening to us, um, learning new things, and even arguing with us, I know that you're still excited to learn. 
And to assure you that you will love the program, well, this is a tough job for us teachers. And we have to make sure that everything that you're doing in your classes would contribute to the attainment of the program outcomes, as, as previously mentioned. But other than this, I think students should understand that the journey in the higher education is very personal. You either love it or hate it based on your perspective about the program. And of course, we, your teachers, are contributory to this. But what is lasting is something that you have to learn yourself in the process. Let me take my personal academic journey as an example. I really loved sciences. I used to represent my school in science quiz bowls, and I didn't like English, especially during my elementary years. Well, in high school, I was fortunate enough to have been mentored by a great English teacher. She inspired me to pursue the field, although at that time, I entered half-hearted. However, I found a love for the study of the English language and its allied fields through time. It did not happen all at once. I'd like to believe that for you, our students now, for you to love the program, you have to embrace it. Maybe not fully now, but you have to embrace it fully, little by little. Immerse yourself in the field. And whenever it gets tough, the more you have to hold on to it and understand its complexities. What remained as a challenge for me, well, it has always been, is to explain some very technical concepts and processes into something that could be digestible for the students, considering that all of you have probably heard these terms only now. What's challenging also about these courses are the contradicting theories that trailblazers, the authors like Komsky, Wardho, Holmes, and many others have already established in syntax, social linguistics, and translation studies, respectively. And probably one very challenging role that teachers have to do, especially for the first year, is to inculcate the love for research and find the benefits of doing research. Because you noticed it, that almost all courses would require you to have a research project, right, Dwayne? Actually, I've been talking to one of the freshies earlier and they said, Kuya, first week pa lang gani, naka, nanay nakahan ay nga research siya mo. Ah, and I was like, oh no. They, they're very afraid of it. So with that, also ma'am, na, na stigmatize na yung research as something very intimidating for the students. Mm. So how do you suggest that we paint this stigma in the research on a different light? How would we make it less daunting for the students? <laughs> well, it has always been daunting, you know? And I think the right, the right mindset to that is just you have to accept that we have come to the time when information is of great value. And whoever has information or knows how to produce information wields considerable influence and power to the society. And you cannot do this unless you have research skills. We have this quotation in the academe uh, which says, you either sink or swim, and that's up to you. I mean, you can always look at the positive outcomes of research, you know. It is a tool for building knowledge, for facilitating learning. It is your means to understand various issues and increase public awareness. It is also your way to ascertain lies and support truths, and it could be our means to find, gauge, and seize opportunities. Ma'am, with that being said, you know, you have mentioned that the research became, becomes a tool for us to use as um, a knowledge repertoire, if you may. Do you think that the institution has provided unfair treatment and lack of support, especially in the realm of social sciences. I believe that academic institutions should think of opportunities that highlight more the interface of various disciplines, meaning look for research projects that require more collaboration, partnership, and interdisciplinarity, thus giving equal recognition and support to all programs in the university. I believe that more impactful research projects come from a balanced perspective of the problem, processes, and solution, 
and the lenses, the frameworks, the paradigms in the social sciences and the humanities will help elucidate the contexts of the problem that needs to be addressed, thereby allowing the scientists, scientists and inventors to provide more practical, cultural rele culturally relevant and sustainable solutions. I'd like to say that um, probably IIT has to work out with more research projects that highlight the collaborations of these disciplines first. And yeah, somehow that would resolve the current issue on not putting much emphasis on research in social sciences and humanities. But you know what? I'd like to share this. Um, the faculty members in the College of Arts and Social Sciences are actually very um, creative, proactive, I would say, and very motivated to conduct researches. And with that, I, I, already, I already commend them for um, really trying their best, even if there aren't a lot of support, not only in the Institute, but in the larger society, you know, there are a lot of organizations that support more um, for the natural sciences or the hard sciences. I hope that uh, in the future, there are more organizations and funders that would support research in social sciences and the humanities. Well, I remember when I first entered into the um, program, one of the sophomores told me that, are you ready for all the research that you're going to handle? Because you will have at least five on a semester. And I was like, oh no, what is there in store for me with that? And But now that I've finished my first year and entering my second year, I have come to realize that these researches are very relevant, not just for us English majors, but also for those who are, there are a lot of students who are very afraid of English. And I am very happy to know that we will be able to decode why they are afraid of English. So I really think, I agree with you, ma'am, that we should be provided with more resources when it comes to research. I'd like to add that I think um, as, as people in the social sciences and the humanities, uh, we have to embrace this challenge also. We have to deal with this challenge of, of proving to the wider academic landscape and to the world that we can do something, especially in research. A lot of people might think that particularly in our field, we just teach kids, we, we just teach students to speak, to write, to read, to listen, and to become communicatively competent. But not a lot of people realize that we actually look into contexts. We look into the cultural, the political, the historical contexts that actually um, shaped or influenced an entire communicative event or um, a particular language and how does it vary given different contexts. Also, we, we can do a lot of research that actually impact policies, maybe in the educational sector or maybe even in the government. So I believe we also have the responsibility to show to the world that we matter and that our researches matter and that our frameworks and paradigms are useful to solve real-world problems. Yes, ma'am. You have mentioned that in our class once, that our, our course is multifaceted. It, has, it impacts a lot of um, fields in the daily lives of people. So now I will come to the very, 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 very important question, especially for the students. What is there to love in Baels? I'd like to answer your question by starting with telling you what the pillars of the program are. We actually have pillars of the program. One is the program is interdisciplinary. When you say interdisciplinary, you have the chance to study English language from the inside out, local global perspectives, with emphasis on the contextualized language used through various frameworks, political, sociological, economic, and of course, cultural, among others. Also, our program is relevant. Relevant in a sense that it tries to capture or answer the demands of industries in the global arena. 
On the third year, for instance, you will be choosing which track to pursue. So for instance, if you like teaching, you will have ELT or English language teaching. So most of the cognates that you will have to take are related to, to language teaching. Or if you don't like that, and if you feel like you are more productive in other industries like media, communication outlets, government or private owned offices like BPOs, there's another track for that. So as much as possible, we tried our best to find your niche in the society later, in the, later after graduation. The program is also context-based. Um, I don't know if you noticed this as well, but um, students are, are actually uh, encouraged to examine language-related problems in the community in Mindanao and in the ASEAN region and maybe suggest frameworks to address these problems. And more importantly, it's collaborative. You will be able to do a lot of te teamwork in trying to accomplish shared goals and therefore strengthen shared values and experiences. And lastly, of course, and this is very obvious, at the core of every instruction is research to prepare you to generate new knowledge in the field. And what's more important is you need to think about this. Language is essential to human life, both as a basic social necessity and also as a powerful, complex social resource. So when you have a full grasp of what this means, then this gives you power and agency. When we are critically aware of our language learning and development, we can take control of the multiple ways we can participate in the society. So for me, the BIOS program allows us to see language learning and teaching in an extended context, not just in a vacuum. No, rather than just mere addition of a code for international communication, no, BIOS is more than that. The use of English provides us access to knowledge, allows us to discuss and maybe even challenge issues like unequal distribution of linguistic resources or maybe identity issues or cultural issues and many others. And this leads you, leads the student, leads us to our own understanding of ownership of language. Moreover, um, the fields in linguistics and, and other disciplines that are related to this, this allows you to see the world from both micro and macro perspectives. And that through the study of language and all its facets, you'll develop an understanding on how people learn to speak or write, why do they respond this way, what contributes to language and linguistic, I mean, communicative behavior or linguistic behavior. You also develop a genuine respect for linguistic and cultural diversity. And it is really our hope that throughout your college years, you will appreciate that the program tried its best, is, is trying its best to prepare you for life in the community and the wider society in which you will be a part of. Well, that certainly gave us a lot of enlightenment. It gave us a reason to love our course because, to be honest, there are times when we were just like, oh my God, this is very mahirap. <laughs> this is so hard. This, I don't want to do this anymore. And like, But at the end of the day, if you think about it, in my perspective, if we think about it in a way that we can impact. I have said this when the officers asked me, what will you tell the freshies to expect here in Bios. I was like, you will not expect cupcakes and rainbows. It will be very hard. It will be a challenge, but that challenge will give you an opportunity to explore something that is very beautiful, that gives us an identity, that gives every single individual their uniqueness because of the language that they speak. It gives us a power because we understood and knowledge is power. So with that being said, I am very thankful to have you here today with us, Ma'am Irish. It's a pleasure to converse with you and for you to enlighten us about the BIELS program, especially since we have lots of questions regarding the topic, regarding the course, what difference it is. Of course, we're still disheartened because of the lack of the literature and the theater, but we have we do have a Bay Playhouse for that to thank for. I am very happy to to introduce also that shameless plug to the freshies that we also have theater. We, we're still exploring that avenue. So 
with that being concluded, I am very happy, ma'am. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to talk with you. Thank you very much, Dwayne. And actually, the pleasure is mine. And I always believe that for you to be really successful in whatever you get yourself into, you have to understand your why. You have to understand also um, what is it really? Why were you choosing this instead of all the other options that are made available to you? And now that if you made that choice, I hope that you will be able to find the courage, the determination to really live up to that choice. After all, for me, really, I, I believe this is a misconception among young ones that school should be very easy and that you just have to chill and relax. But no, everything that you do in school will be sort of your experiment of some sort. And then whatever your, your takeaways of this these experiments you will be bringing this along with you once you graduate and once you are already there in the real world. And I tell you this, the real world is much, much um, challenging, nerve-wracking, and there are a lot of pressures that would really sometimes take the best and, of course, the worst in you. So do not think about school as something that would just punish you? No, it's not. No, everything that you do here are all for you. The research, yeah, the demands of research, the demands coming from your professors, these are all for you. And you will only appreciate this, maybe not now, but I hope that you will appreciate the value of the entire process um, after graduation, maybe, and when you become adults yourself, working adults yourselves, you'll realize, oh my God, tama pala si ma'am, tama pala si sir. So, yeah, um, as you said, the first-year students now are having difficulty. I know that. It's normal. If it's not difficult, then it's not normal. Tests, example, are, are part of every classroom. In the same manner, whatever tasks, activities that you have are all part of school, right? The more you exert... The longer the waiting, the sweeter the kiss. I agree. I agree with that, Dwayne. Thank you so much, Mom, for giving us this opportunity. And to our listeners, I hope you enjoy our very first episode with Mom Irish as much as I did because it was very, very enlightening. So that wraps up our first episode. Stay tuned because on our next episode, we're going to explore the BALS program more, but in a different lens comment your questions and suggestions and subscribe to keep up to date with what else have a good night bye